G'day guys, you join me on a really damp, rainy, autumnal night and I just look outside and I know that there's going to be animals walking around out there in the dark, particularly in my greenhouse. As many of you know, we have got a greenhouse, outdoor enclosures and a shed that's absolutely chock full of awesome animals. I absolutely love them. My kids are born and raised with them and I want to take you guys out there tonight. So I'm going to don my wonderful head torch, walk around the garden looking like some sort of crazy Dalek, shining it around, seeing what we can see out in this pouring rain out there. It's really hammering down. But the fact that it's hammering down and it's actually quite warm means a lot of the nocturnal animals, particularly the amphibians, are going to be really, really active. So you join me and we'll see what we can find live, completely unexpected. You will see things as quickly as I see them. So let's get our funny old head torches on our heads and see what we can find. One of the starts of my uh, nocturnal journey each night is to try and find any mini beasts like this crane fly here flying about, which I potentially can give to our inhabitants in our greenhouse. Perfect, look at that little slug, wonderful. Oh, look at that, a little tiny snail. Let's see what else we can find. These are real treats for these guys. So I always come out here as a little tiny snail as well, perfect. You never know what you're going to find, and these are all supplementary bits of food for the beasties that live in our greenhouse. Most of them really, really love slugs and snails as well. There's loads up there, actually. I love coming around. Oh my goodness, look at the size of that slug. That's a huge slug. Perfect. On these damp evenings like this, it's absolutely perfect. Not only amphibian weather, but oh wow, look at that one. Perfect for these inverts as well. These guys, because they haven't got shells as such, apart from snails, of course, but because they've got um, skin that allows moisture out, Slugs and snails, of course, only really come out, oh, it's another snail, only come out oh, when it's rainy and wet. So, of course, that's when the amphibians come out as well. So whenever I come for these mooches out in our shed or in our greenhouse, I always keep my eyes peeled for the food they can potentially eat. So, right, here we go. You're with me live as we're about to go into the greenhouse. Let's see what the rain has brought these guys. Let's see what the rain has brought out tonight. Let's see what we can see right off. This is our amphibian enclosure. Pop the slugs and the snails down in there. Let's have a look, see if we can see anyone. Oh, no way, look at him. Oh, no, my gorgeous son Ethan's favorite, that is a fire salamander. Oh, somebody just hopped away. Oh, well, that's a green toad. See that green toad? Aren't they beautiful? That's a male. You can tell the males because they've got this sort of like very pale beige background, but this lovely green marbling on their backs as well. What a real beauty, look at him. But back to this gorgeous one down here, look at that. If I can go real close on him. That is a fire salamander. Not just any fire salamander, this is called Fastuosa. Fastuosa is found from uh, the Pyrenees, the uh, mountain range in France and Spain. And these guys have got this glorious, glorious yellow band or yellow stripe, they've got this glorious, these guys have got this, gl these guys have got this glorious pair of yellow stripes down their backs. Only Fastuosa has that. Aren't they beautiful? And these fire salamanders, they're called fire salamanders for a really good reason. Back in the day, in the time of medieval times, when the guys used to gather up firewood, put it together and have a big fire, these guys, these fire salamanders, they live in the moss and particularly inside rotten logs on the forest floor. And what they used to do was when the guys used to collect them, they used to put them in their fire and of course set it all on fire. These poor little fire salamanders, who are an amphibian, they would of course come climbing out of the wood because they don't want to be cooked alive. And the guys who were having the fire, they could not believe their eyes. They thought the fire salamanders were coming out of the fire. They believed that they were born of fire. Hence the name fire salamander. What a cool, cool bit of history. This is a female. As you can see, she's, uh, she's clambering around and she's probably looking for slugs and snails. So let's leave her in peace and see who else is mooching around tonight on this gloriously wet amphibian evening. What else can we see? Oh, look at them. More green toads. Oh, wow, there's tons of them. Three lovely green toads. These are all females. One, two, three. We've got number four here. Number four actually is a male. And the males, like I mentioned earlier on, are really, really distinctive because they've got this sort of like beigey colour with this sort of like green speckly pattern on their backs. Whereas the females are the beautiful namesake of the green toad. See that gorgeous, gorgeous green patterning? They don't like the light, so they're running away. But you can see why they're called green toads. Aren't they gorgeous? Let's carry on looking around to see anyone else about. Who else is around tonight? Oh, look, another little male green toad. Look at him. He's got lovely eyes. What a beautiful little chap. See how massive his pupils are. See how big and black they are. That's because, of course, at night they have to have their pupils as big as possible to let the light in so they can see what they're doing. But let me shine my torch off him so I don't blind him. 
Like, beautiful face. We said, oh, wow, another fire, Sally. There you go, another Fastuosa. If I come right in on her, hopefully you can see. There we are. She's, of course, hiding her face. I'm loath to touch these guys because they've actually got these noxious chemicals, these irritant chemicals in their skin. That's also why they're so brightly coloured like this. That bright colour is to tell anyone going near them, seriously mate, don't touch me, I am poisonous. If you touch me and get my skin excretions in your mouth, it is going to be pretty distasteful. So I'm going to leave this girl alone. But wow, what a beauty, I love that colour. Oops. I've just noticed down here is another absolutely beautiful green toad. The reason they're called green toes, as you can see, is they've got this beautiful green marble pattern all over their bodies. Isn't she lovely? I call her she, because she's got this lovely marbling pattern, whereas the males that we saw earlier, usually more of a sort of uniform pattern. But the females have got this lovely, lovely marbling. Aren't they lovely? Beautiful girl. Oh, wow, look, another one. Oh, another fire, Sally. I just absolutely adore these guys. Not only do I avoid trying to touch them for, uh, for my own sake, because of course they are poisonous, but also their skins are incredibly sensitive. You can see how shiny those beautiful skins are. And that's because their skin is so very sensitive to dryness. They are an amphibian after all. Amphibians have not got waterproof skin like us or like reptiles do. So that's why amphibians generally only come up when it's raining like it is tonight. Isn't she a beauty? Normally, of course, I put my hand in there, I'd pick them up, I'd show them to you guys, but for this little lady, I'd much rather just leave her where she is. She's clambering around in this damp old bit of fern. Let's leave her to her own devices. What a beauty. I just love them. They're such gorgeous, gentle animals. Such a lovely face as well. And what a beautiful girl. What a stunningly, stunningly beautiful girl. There we are, my darling. This looks so beautiful as well in the high contrast on this lovely green heartstone fern. Off you go, lovely girl. Good luck to you. Hang on a minute. Even in the natural world, things do go pear-shaped. Check this bad boy out. Oh my goodness. What is going on here? Uh, a snail appears to be having a ride on the back of the head of a green toad. But I'm wondering whether possibly this little green toad's trying to grab hold of it, but the snail's taking advantage. Sorry, toad, am I embarrassing you? Well done, snail. I think you made a bit of a quick getaway there, or a slow one. <laughs> Sorry Toad, that is a great look, what a gorgeous animal. You look like a really miffed Toad, it looks like he's actually telling me, you just ruined that for me, you did. This is so embarrassing. Please go away, turn the camera off now. I'll call my agent. There's another glorious shot here of another absolute beauty of a fire Sally. Haven't they got lovely faces? They've almost got smiles. I really do love them. A beautiful, beautiful face. And they are so gentle and so slow, creeping around like a giant yellow newt, looking for worms and slugs and snails. They really are so very beautiful. And they're absolutely stunning against this moss, and against these ferns. These guys, they uh, they come from Central Europe and they live in these uh, these damp sort of forest floor areas. So it's very essential actually, whenever they're raised, that they kept pleasantly temperate and damp. Um, you sometimes see them in pet shops being sold as exotic pets, kept warm and so forth. They do terribly indoors, they really do. I'd only ever keep these guys outside in the temperate environment they're used to. And only in this temperate environment do you actually get the lovely damp conditions for all this moss and ferns for them to live in as well. So you know if you've got it right, if you've got your ferns and moss growing, then it must be all right for the fire sallies. But oh my goodness, what a stunningly beautiful animal.